Let's solve uh, one more problem in this series of problems. It'll be a power cycle where we are asked to calculate the entropy production that takes place during the cycle. And so with this problem, we will introduce the concept of entropy production. A system executes a power cycle while receiving 1050 kilojoules by heat transfer at a temperature of 525 Kelvin discharging 700 kilojoules by heat transfer at 350 Kelvin. There are no other heat transfers. A, determine the entropy production in the cycle. B, determine the efficiency of the cycle. And C, determine the Carnot efficiency of the cycle, uh, where the Carnot efficiency is just the maximum theoretical efficiency, which we've calculated in previous problems. And I'll talk about the Carnot cycle momentarily. So here's a schematic of this power cycle. We have a high temperature reservoir at 525 degrees Kelvin, and it's transferring 1,050 kilojoules of energy into the power cycle via heat transfer. The power cycle uses this energy to produce work. And what it cannot use to produce work, it will reject to our cold reservoir operating at 350 degrees Kelvin. Now our first uh, problem is to calculate the entropy production during this cycle. So let's take a short break from solving this problem and introduce the concept of entropy. The best way that I know to introduce uh, you to entropy is to start by saying that uh, entropy is a man-made concept. And the concept is that entropy is created whenever irreversibilities such as friction and heat transfer dissipate energy without creating any useful work. So all spontaneous processes are irreversibility, things like you know, uh, pressure uh, loss, heat transfer loss, friction, all of these things dissipate energy without doing any use of useful work. And since the laws of nature's demands that all real processes do contain irreversibilities, then entropy is created in all real processes. And so all real processes are irreversible processes. Now, if we take that to a limit, um, if we want to know what the maximum theoretical performance of a real process might be, we can imagine it being a, a reversible process. In other words, a process that contains no irreversibilities at all. Now, we can't really build such a system, but we can imagine it as the limit of performance of a real system. And that's gonna be a reversible process. Now, in the past, when we've dealt with mass uh, and energy, uh, we have a continuity equation for mass and a uh, conservation uh, of energy equation, uh, which is the first law of thermodynamics. We've always dealt with mass and energy as uh, properties that were conserved. Now, entropy is a property, but it is not conserved. And be, that is because it's actually created uh, in real processes by irreversibilities that are uh, take place within the process. Now, this entropy statement of the second law of thermodynamics is this. It says it is impossible for any system to operate in a way that entropy is destroyed. So in real processes, entropy is created. In an imaginary uh, reversible process that has no irreversibilities, uh, there is no entropy created. And if we calculate that for a process the entropy production is negative, in other words, we're destroying entropy, we're removing it, then that is an impossible process. So the question then becomes, if, if I can't destroy uh, entropy, if I can't uh, create negative entropy, then can the entropy of a system be lowered? Well, yes, it can. Uh, all I have to do is cool the system. And if I'm cooling it, uh, heat transfer is removing energy from it. And entropy always flows with heat transfer and in the same direction. So when I cool the system, I'm lowering its entropy. Well, 
How can that be? Uh, we just said that uh, you cannot destroy entropy. Well, I'm not destroying it. I'm transferring it to the surroundings. And so what happens is when I uh, remove entropy from a system, then the entropy of the, sound rate, uh, the surroundings will increase, and they'll increase by a greater amount than was removed uh, from the system. And in that way, the entropy of the universe, and the universe is the system and the surroundings taken together, will always increase during a real process. Therefore, it's often said that the entropy of the universe increases without bound. So let's get back to the problem that we were asked to solve. Um, here's a uh, copy of the uh, schematic that we had. And let's look at how we can calculate entropy production. Well, we have an equation for that. Let's use the Greek uh, sigma, the small sigma, as our symbol for entropy production. And this equation says that the negative of the entropy production uh, throughout a cycle is equal to the summation around the cycle of the quantity uh, dq over t, where dq is the amount of energy uh, transferred by heat transfer, and t is the temperature at which it is transferred. So in this uh, power cycle, we have two heat transfer. We have the heat transfer from the hot reservoir uh, going into the power cycle, and we have heat transfer from the power cycle delivering energy to the cold reservoir. So in this particular case, we can say that the negative of the entropy production during this cycle is QH over TH plus QC over TC, because QH takes place at a temperature of 525 degrees, and QC takes place at a temperature of 350 degrees. So now we can substitute values for this, and we have that the uh, negative of the entropy production around the cycle is QH over TH. Well, QH is 1,050 kilojoules, and TH is 525 degrees Kelvin. Now we're gonna to add to that, since this is a summation, we're gonna add QC over TC. Well, QC is 700 kilojoules, but it's removing um, uh, energy from our system. And by our convention, uh, energy transfer, taking energy out of our system is always negative. So in this equation, uh, we're gonna add a negative, uh, QC is a negative value and the temperature at which it takes place is TC, that's 350 Kelvin. So if I do the math here, I get that the negative of entropy production around the cycle is two plus or minus two, having units of kilojoules per degree Kelvin. So entropy has units of energy per degree. And we always use absolute temperature scales. Well, this tells us that the entropy production of this cycle is zero. Well, how can that be? Well, it's simple enough. Uh, if I imagine a uh, reversible cycle, so that if I assume that this uh, imaginary cycle has uh, no irreversibilities in it, then it will not produce any entropy because entropy is created by irreversibilities. So when I conclude that uh, uh, sigma is zero, that is the entropy production of this uh, cyclic process is zero, then I know that I'm dealing with an imaginary reversible process. Let's solve the uh, next step in this problem. We're asked to find the efficiency of the process. So for a power cycle, we know uh, we've done this many times in the previous problems that the efficiency is just the work output divided by the uh, energy transferred in by heat transfer from a high temperature source. And an energy balance tells us that work is equal to QH minus QC. Simplifying that, we get the efficiency is just one, one minus QC over QH. We have those values and we calculate that the thermal efficiency of this um, power cycle is 0.333. And then we're asked to find the Carnot efficiency. Well, the Carnot efficiency is simply the maximum theoretical efficiency. 
And that comes from a Carnot cycle, which is a particular um, reversible cycle. Now, all reversible cycles have the same uh, maximum theoretical efficiency because they're all reversible and you can't do better than that. <clears throat> but we tend to use the uh, Carnot cycle as our representative <clears throat> for reversible cycles. And so we call the maximum theoretical uh, efficiency the Carnot efficiency. Now recall also that for a reversible cycle only, that the ratio QC over QH is equal to TC over TH. And so we can rewrite the uh, efficiency equation, the maximum theoretical efficiency um, we get is one minus QC over QH. We get that once more, of course, those being for the reversible cycle. But we can substitute TC over TH for QC over QH and we get the maximum theoretical or the Carnot efficiency is 1 minus 350k over 525k. And we calculate that the maximum theoretical uh, efficiency is 0.333. Well, it should be no surprise that that's the same as the um, what we're calling the actual efficiency of this process. And that's because this process is a reversible process. Well, let me make some comments on this problem just to clarify uh, a few more minor points. Um, we know this system is reversible because there was no entropy production within the system. And recall also that we defined the system as the power cycle. The system did not include the high and low temperature thermal reservoirs. Those were part of the surroundings. Remember, anything that's not in the system is part of uh, the surroundings. But we also know that heat transfer is an irreversibility. And how can we have an irreversibility in a reversible system? Well, we can't. This irreversibility, the heat transfer, takes place in the surroundings. It takes place outside of our system. And so the surroundings, uh, the process that takes place in the surroundings is not reversible. And it is the system that undergoes the reversible process, not the surroundings. And that's why we're going to call this uh, situation here, we'll say that this process is internally reversible. That means it's reversible inside the system, but not in the surroundings. And finally, uh, let's conclude by trying to capture an idea about what entropy is. Entropy is created by irreversibilities. And you can think of entropy as it's some kind of measure of energy that's no longer available to do work because irreversibilities dissipate energy without performing any useful work.